Okay. You guys, Ali, you can see the notes? Yep, we can see them. There we go. Okay, I am recording the meeting. Le Chatelier's principal. Le Chatelier was a French chemist. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to use chemistry as a way to make money, as a, as a, a to be an entrepreneur. And so what he did was he, he found that if you could manipulate a reaction by the conditions, you could cause the reaction to shift in one direction or another. I always, when I uh, teach this at first year camp, I always, I always use the example kind of, again, like us. Like we're going along and everything is fine and then something happens, like uh, whatever, you get a bad grade in a class or, or your boss, he or she wants you to work more hours or less hours. Or you're going to do an argument with a friend or a family member. Something changes. There's some change. And, and what we have to do is we have to figure out how do we respond to that change. Well, well that's the same thing that happens to a chemical system. Is the system is at equilibrium, and it's moving along, and everything is fine. And then something changes. And the changes we're going to talk about are changes in concentration on this slide, pressure or volume, which I'm going to kind of lump together, and then temperature, which I'll probably get to. I might get to today, but, I, but if not, I will definitely get to it on, on tomorrow. And we're, what we're going to have to do is predict which direction will the reaction go. This is, this is like Q without numbers. We're going to predict, is this reaction going to go right, left, or no change? Okay, so I'm just going to be quiet here for a second and let you guys. Copy these notes down and we'll talk about it. Some examples, do a little demo. Okay, so first factor is 
uh, concentration. Factors that cause equilibrium, equilibrium to shift in favor of more reactants or products. So what we're going to do here, as a matter of fact, the lab that we're going to do, if it all comes to plan, is we don't have a snow day on whatever day that is, we come back on the 22nd or something like that. We're going to do a lab, and what you're going to do is you're actually going to make for me the rainbow with different colors. And you're going to have three reactions, and you're going to be using Le Chatelier to get the reactions to shift one way or another. But the first thing is concentration. Now, now I'm going to tell you, this, and this works for our class, but this is the way I teach it in, in first-year chem, and it works in AP Chem, too, just to try and simplify. Now, I'm going to explain the verbiage here, but this will work for both. This will actually work for concentration and for temperature. And again, temperature, I'm not, I'm not sure if I won't get to this today, but I might get to it. I'll definitely get to it tomorrow. But it's this little saying. It's kind of stupid, but it works. Increase or add, you go away. Okay, all bows. Increase, add, you go away. You remove, remove or decrease, you go towards non bells okay, and I'm going to show you what, what I mean by that here as we do this. But but I'm going to say it just a couple times to be annoying to try and get it in your brain. Again, I read somewhere, heard somewhere, that if a person hears something seven times, it takes the seventh time. For me, I think it takes about David the 25th time before I get it. But, but <clears throat> before it's in their brain. So I'm going to say it five times real quick. Increase, add, go away. Remove or decrease towards, there's one. Increase or add, you go away. Remove or decrease, you go towards, Kyle, there's two. Increase or add, go away. Remove or decrease, goes towards, there's three. Increase or add, go away. Remove or decrease, goes towards, there's four. And five, increase or add, go away. Remove or decrease, go towards, there's, there's five. And I think I said it a couple other times. Okay, so so what that means is, and kind of the way this works, it's a, it's a, it's truly like the system is thinking, and you'll see this if you think about it, is that if you add something to the system, it's, it's almost like if you think about it in a financial term, say that on the Super Bowl, you had bet on Tampa Bay, and they won, okay? Well, if you would add it, so say you did that, you won, so you bet with your friend and you won $20. Well, now you're going to use it. You're going to use that $20. And so what my wife says after raising our kids and everything, and for me being around high school students for so long, usually guys, when you win money, you're heading to Chipotle or Qdoba. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay. Ladies, on the other hand, are usually going to the clothing store. Okay, so I, I, I get that. And I, I understand now with my lovely wife of almost 32 years, she likes to go to the clothing store and I like to eat. Okay. If, but the point is that if you won money, you want to spend it. And say you bet on the Chiefs, okay? So you lost. So, so if you bet on Tampa Bay, if you increase or add, you're going to go away, which means you're going to use the money. And I'll show you that. Use the money you want. But say you bet on Kansas City, because I thought Kansas City was going to win the Super Bowl. And then they got killed, <clears throat> which was okay by me. But then, so you, you're out 20 bucks. So then you either make another bet because March Madness is about to happen. Maybe you're going to bet on Gonzaga. Or, or you call your boss and say, hey, man, I need more hours because I've lost some money. That's remove or decrease go towards. The system is going to try, just like you're going to try and replace the money you lost in your bet, the system is going to do the same thing. And if you read what I've got here, an increase in concentration will cause a shift in the direction that uses up that component. That's what this means. So if you add something, the system wants to use it. And a decrease in concentration will cause a shift in the direction that will produce more of the removed component. That's what this means. So if that makes more sense to you, use that. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, so here's an example. So here is the reaction. So let me talk about this. The picture above is the, the visual of what's going on here. So if I write this out, and I also want to talk about these graphs. Okay, and one thing I'm going to say, and this kind of goes right along with 
the K, the KC thing is that solids and liquids, when you add them, their, their concentrations are never going to change. So whenever you add a solid or a liquid, it's not going to have any effect at all. And a matter of fact, because I'm about done with that test that I'm going to give you after spring break, there is one on there where it's a solid that's pulverized. So it's been broken into small pieces. That's still not going to affect the rate. A solid and liquid, adding or removed won't affect anything. Okay, it says, say we add more N2. So we add N2. So what we're going to have to do is predict which way is this system going to go. And this is why I like this. So increase or add, go away. Well, N2 is on the left. In the, in the chemical equation, N2 is on the left. So if we add N2, increase or add, we're going to go away. So if it's on the left, that is going to cause this reaction to shift to the right. Okay, and that's what those graphs are showing. But what you'll have to predict, okay, you add N2, we're going to go away from N2, we're going to go this way. Now, like I said, it's almost like the system is thinking. Because N2 is on the left, if we add it, the system is going to use it. That's what it does when it goes right. And if it goes right, then this is going to increase. Because we're going right, we're making more of it. The H2, because it's being consumed, is going to decrease. And the N2, and if you look on the graph, so I'm talking about the graph. Notice the, the concentration of the NH3, the top line, because it's a product, because when we add it N2, we're shifting right. It's increased, and notice it went up. The, the, the curve for the NH3 went up. And re, notice how before the, the spikes, everything was flat. Remember back at the beginning of the chapter, I said when the lines were flat, we were at equilibrium. Okay, so the reason NH3 went up is because it's being produced. It's shifting right. It's making more of it. Notice what happened to N2. There's a big spike up, so it's flat. This is the middle, the middle line. Spikes up. And then it goes back down. And the reason it goes down is because, again, it's going right. So it went up initially because we added more of it. But then it went back down. But notice when it reaches equilibrium, when it flattens out again, N2 is higher than it was before. So those of you in class see it ends up being higher than it was before. So it's spiked up. But then it goes back down because it's being consumed. And notice H2 went down because it's on the left side, so it decreased. Okay, here, here is a reaction. Now, I'm actually going to write this in the other way. So let me write this. This is kind of a typical, and to be honest with you, most of the time, and again, we have a, I always have a test on 12 and 13. I do it separately, chapter 12 and chapter 13, and I almost always have this one on the test, this equation. Because I'm going to do a little demo with this. But I didn't this year. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I didn't include it. But, but, and again, we are getting, let's see, today is, is today is March 10th. Is today March 10th? I think so. So the, t the day of the test is May 7th. So we're within two months of the test. AP always loves this equation. It's kind of a strange equation. I'm going to reverse it from the way that I've got it uh, written on in my notes. Okay, and I'm going to actually I've got this, and I want to I want to do this demo. I'll just do this reaction right here for you guys. I want it so you guys can see it. But this is going to try and make the, the actual visual. So you can actually see, see this shift from one direction to another. Okay, so describe the equilibrium shift. Again, like I said, I, I decided this year to not include this uh, on, on our test. But AP, again, 
AP, uh, they seem to really love this. They love this this equation. It's kind of a weird one because what we got here is we got iron, which I've got from I got from iron chloride. So the iron chloride. I was actually what I was doing. I was looking on the back of our periodic tables, and I was just looking at the solubility rules. And uh, iron chloride is aqueous. So when I put, so there's chloride around in here, but but what I'm gonna do, so I've got distilled water. Can you guys at home see this? Allie, can you see this? Can yeah, you, I can see that. You can see it, okay. Okay, and I'm gonna put, here's the iron, and that's, if you notice, it says the iron is yellow. It's kind of a yellowish orange, so I'm gonna put in Twenty drops, so I'll swirl that around, and I don't know. I guess maybe it is kind of a yellowish color. So, so the way I've written again, the dozer class can see that Kennedy kind of hard to see, but you can see it's kind of yellowish. It actually, is going yellow. So, I'll write this. So this is yellow. Okay, and then the SCN comes from KSCN, and and remember, whenever we have K, this goes back to the first semester. Whenever we have K. It is one of those soluble ions, which means it dissolves. And you can see here, this is clear. So this is clear. Okay, so now I'm going to put 20 drops of the KSCN in here. And I swirl this around, and now you get a color that looks kind of like liquid blood, would you say, Jackson? And the way I've described this is dark brown. Uh, let's just say it's reddish brown. And the thing that's good about this, and again, in first year chem, in a normal year, we do an experiment with this exact reaction. So I'm going to do a quick visual of this. So now I'm going to split this out into four test tubes. Okay, and I'm going to keep one to be my control. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is the first one, I'm going to add some more KSC. Okay, so this will be my control. So all these, all these are now the same color. When you say Jackson, they're all the same color. So what I can do now, the thing that I like about this is I can see that if this reaction shifts right, it's going to be getting darker color. So going right is darker color. Going left, it's going to get lighter in color. So the first thing I'm going to do is it says I'm going to add KSCN. Well, what that does is the KSCN dissociates into K and SCN. And, of course, you could ask a really good question right now. You go, Mr. Wood, I know the K, okay, potassium. What in the world is SCN? SCN is, a, is an ion called thiocyanin. And to be honest with you, the only time it ever comes up is in this little demo. It's thiocyanate ion. So the K is not a factor here. The K is a spectator ion. So what I'm really doing here is I'm adding SCN. Okay, so remember my rule. Increase, add, go away. Remove or decrease torch. So if I add SCN, SCN is on the left. So that means what I think is going to happen is that is going to make this shift to the right. It's going to make it shift to the right. What am I going to observe then? This is going to increase. So I think it's going to get darker in color. And then this would decrease. And this was added anyways. Increase, add, go away. Okay, so let's do it. So I'm going to add some more of the same thing to KSCN. Okay, and if I hold this up, did it get darker in color? It did. This is Le Chatelier's principle. And again, Le Chatelier was a French chemist a couple hundred years ago, and he used his principles to pr make things that he could use for profit. Okay, so, so, so. KSCN is added, it causes a shift to the right, it got darker in color. 
Okay, the next one, it says FeCl3 is added. So what that means is, and again, I looked on my, I looked actually on the back on my solubility table, and I look up Cl with Fe, it is soluble, which means this dissociates into iron and into three chlorides. Well, the chlorides are just around, but they're not a factor, they're a spectator ion. So really what this is saying is we're adding Fe plus three. Okay, so we add Fe plus three, hopefully you're catching on a little bit. Is that gonna make this go to the right, to the left, or no change? It's gonna to go to the right again. So we add Fe, again, there's Fe, increase, add, go away. So we're gonna go this way. So we're gonna do increase, uh, this would decrease, and this was added anyways. Okay, well let's see. So if I add iron to this test tube, I add iron, And I think, Juliana, you can see again, this is exactly what we predicted. It's getting darker. Okay, and then the one that's always a trick, and this again is one that uh, I, I typically put on the test. And I warn my, my students, I love them all in the past. I tell them this is gonna be on the test and they never get it right. Because I've mm -hmm. learned Kennedy people aren't listening to me. But NaOH, what does NaOH do? Well, if I add NaOH, it's gonna break down into Na. Plus OH. Well, well, Na is one of those four ions. A little bit of review. Remember, there was NaK, NH4, and NO3. They're always soluble. But OH, if I look on my table, hydroxide, with iron, it says it's not soluble. So what this really means is the OH is going to react with the iron. And it's going to remove iron. Kara, can you see this at home? Yeah. You see the bottom? So what this really is doing is by adding NaOH in this, I, I, I'm not going to do this on our test unless I gave you a hint. And I don't think AP would as well. But but by adding NaOH, we're going to remove Fe plus 3. So remember I said remove or decrease goes towards. Well, here's Fe plus 3. Which direction is this going to go? This is going to go to the left. And if it's going to go to the left, then this is going to increase... This is going to increase, and this is going to decrease. Which, what is going to be our observation then? Lighter. It's going to get lighter. Okay, so here, and I actually have some solid sodium hydroxide. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to put some solid sodium hydroxide in here. And sure enough, it's just like Juliana said, it got lighter in color. So our predictions were right. So again, kind of a good visual of what we're talking about here. So increase, add, remove, or decrease, go towards. Okay, now the next thing is pressure and volume. Tell you what, I'm gonna skip around. I'm gonna just, I'm doing a, just a change in plans. Let me just skip back, I'll come back to this. Let's go to temperature. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to screw this all up, but, but in the notes, temperature, the reason I want to do temperature next is because temperature is a lot like concentration in that increase, add, remove, or decrease towards it. I'm going to come back and I'll do pressure and volume tomorrow. The temperature is going to be that same, for me to simplify it, it's going to be that same principle. Increase, add, away, remove, or decrease towards. So when a reaction is heated, the system absorbs. So it's going to be using that same principle, and I'll show you that. The system absorbs heat 
causing the reaction to shift in the direction that absorbs heat. So again, it's truly like the system is thinking. Like if you add, if you add temperature, the system wants to use it so that the energy would be absorbed. And if, if the temperature is cooled, then the system, if it's getting colder out, then the system would want to create energy, create heat, so it would go to the exothermic direction. The thing about temperature, the thing about temperature that you want to look at is you want to look at where the energy term is. Okay, so here is an example. Okay, so again, I'm going to use that, and I've said it way more than seven times now, but increase or add, you go away. Remove or decrease, you go towards. And that, that, we're going to use that same thing. Now, now, for pressure and volume, which I'm going to get to, Tomorrow, I'm not going to use that, but for concentration and temperature, I will. But for temperature, you've got to find the energy in the equation. Or you could be told it's exothermic, which means delta H is negative. And remember, then energy is on the right. It's a product. Or if it's endothermic, then delta H is positive, then the energy would be on the left. Okay, so here's a great example of the brown cloud, which can be a problem for us in Denver, okay? So it says both of these gases, so NO2, which is brown, and N2O4 gas is colorless. And, and if you think about, because we're kind of in Highland Ranch, we're, we're above the city. The city of Denver kind of sits in a trough. You've got the mountains, and then you kind of go up, and then there's the plains. And we're, we're above. So we look down in Denver. Think about if you're out on 470, you look down in Denver, and some days you see the brown cloud. You know what I'm talking about? You see the brown cloud. Well, that's, that's this, which comes from cars. But both gases are pollutants in Denver air. What color would be on a hot day? Okay, so on a hot day, so this is the reaction. So we've got two NO2 gas in equilibrium with N2O4 gas. And the delta H is negative. So that means energy is over here. So on a hot day, on a hot day, that means the temperature went up. So in my principle here, I added temperature. So I'm going to go away from temperature. Since temperature is over here, that means it's going to shift to the, to the left. Which means on a hot summer day, this is the brown color. We're going to have more of a brown cloud. And if you think about it, on a summer day, which we're not in the summer right now, we're going to get 20 inches of snow in a couple of days. But on a summer day, when you're driving around on the freeway, Think about those big signs up. It says, avoid being outside. Avoid mowing your yard. I never listen to those, Julian. I'm a rebel. I mow the yard when they tell me to not mow the yard. But, but this is because this is going on. And think about right now, the temperature goes down. It's going to go down a lot in the next couple of days, it sounds like. So remove or decrease go towards. So again, for temperature, we're going to go, we're going to go towards the energy term, which means we're going to go right which means there's going to be less of a brown cloud. So in the winter, when it's colder, in this reaction, we're going right. Now, if you, if you look at it in terms of the system, the system is truly thinking. Okay, when it's hot, it goes this way, it absorbs, it uses that energy. 
when it's cold, the system makes more energy. It's truly, it's truly like it's thinking. Okay. So concentration and temperature, this is going to be our principle. And that is going to be a really good place to stop. So where we're going to go tomorrow. So the next time you that I'll see you guys in class will be on the Monday after spring break. And hopefully everybody will be here and we'll do a lot. But I need you to tune in tomorrow because I want to talk about pressure and volume. Pressure and volume is a little bit different. So, Okay, so this is where I'm going to start tomorrow. It's going to be a different principle. And we'll finish it up. We'll do some practice problems. Uh, you guys at home, you guys are dismissed. I will see you guys tomorrow. And Thank you. You guys here in class have a good spring break, and I will see you guys in a week and a half. Hey, Thank Word. you. See you guys. Uh, Mr. Wood, I'm here. My wife was having some issues at the beginning of the meeting. Say, could you say it again, Tyler? Yeah, I said, I am here. My wife, I was having some okay. issues at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Thanks, Tyler, for letting me know. Have a great day. You too, buddy. See you, man. See you guys. Have a good spring break. Bye, Mr. Wood. See you guys. <laughs>